You guys have asked and I have answered. You've been submitting me in your sleep questions and I've had the opportunity to answer them. And this sleep question comes from mom, Nicole, who has a 10 month old baby, Isabel. So let's take a listen to see what Nicole needs help with. Hi, my name's uh, Nicole Stothert. I have a 10 month old. Her uh, name is Isabel. Uh, I've been breastfeeding since she was born and uh, she's coming up on her first birthday in March. And it just came to me that I am the only one who can put her to bed for naps and uh, for nighttime sleep. And I want to share this duty with others, like my husband, like her aunts and uncles, and uh, her grandparents. So, and going back to work in April, things are going to have to change. So I thought, now's the time. Uh, hoping you can help me and us out. Thanks, Alana. Hey, Nicole, thanks so much for asking your question. And it's such a common one. You're going back to work and you want your baby to fall asleep a little bit easier at night. And you want other people to be able to put baby down to sleep at night, especially dad. It's always nice when dad can help out with the bedtime routine. So automatically we would think that we would go to the associations, right? So how is Isabel falling asleep now? She's falling asleep. It sounds like she's falling asleep on the breast. So how do we help her fall asleep on her own when she's placed in her crib? And that would be choosing a method, okay? And, and a method of sleep training. And there's many methods out there. So we'll revisit that in a second. Before we look at what method we're going to do is we want to make sure that we're using all the sleep tools within the good night sleep toolkit, okay? And there's four key tools, the method being only one of them. So the first tool is, are we working with a consistent sleep environment? Is Isabel being placed in her crib regularly, both for naps and for night sleep, so that she's used to her sleep environment, she feels comfortable and secure in her sleep, sleep environment, which will help her fall asleep easier. Is her sleep environment safe and is it conducive to sleep? And I, I talk about these tools a lot throughout my videos. The next tool we want to also look at is, are we working with an age appropriate schedule? So is she being napped well throughout the day? You know, at 10 months, we're looking at at least two naps throughout the day, a morning and an afternoon nap of at least an hour, an hour and a half per nap would be ideal. Um, and are we working with an age appropriate bedtime? So what time is Isabel going to bed at? As you guys know, I'm an early bedtime pusher. So the earlier that we can get her to go to sleep, the better rested she will be to go to bed, the easier it will be to fall asleep without needing you to feed her to sleep. And then we can start working on those independent sleep skills. Which brings me to my next sleep tool, and that's having a nice, calming, and consistent bedtime routine with her. And it sounds like you already have that in place, but now we wanna start incorporating dad, aunts and uncles, and grandparents into it as well every now and then. So you can still offer her that feed during your bedtime routine. You, you know, you can feed her, and then you can pass her off to dad, who then can change her diaper, you know, change her pajamas, read her a story, and then put her down in her crib awake, preferably about 30 minutes before her age appropriate bedtime. Which brings me then to my last sleep tool in the Good Night Sleep Site Toolkit. And that is, as I mentioned before, choosing that method and having her practice that skill of falling asleep on her own at bedtime. Because remember, how she falls asleep at bedtime is how she's gonna expect to fall asleep every time she wakes up throughout the night. So when you're feeding her to sleep now at bedtime and that's how she's falling asleep, she's gonna need you to do that whenever she wakes up throughout the night. So that's one thing I want you to tackle. So choose a method, there's so many out there. Choose one that you're most comfortable using that works best with your family philosophy because you have to understand you've got to be consistent with whatever method that you choose. So therefore, you have to be comfortable with the method that you choose. So do your research, choose the method that works best for your family, and stay consistent. And good luck with you and with baby Isabel. And thank you again for submitting your sleep question. I hope that helps. I have an update for you guys. I actually started to work with Nicole and baby Isabel to break that feed to sleep association with them. And I am so happy to say that they are doing amazing. So Nicole was heading back to work. So we also started working on weaning out some of those feeds and really focusing, getting Isabel, getting that solid sleep throughout the night. 
I'm happy to report that dad is now able to put Isabel to bed. Mom is able to step away a little bit from bedtime if she wants to. Isabel's sleeping great. Mom is sleeping great. She's taking amazing naps throughout the day. Um, it's I'm just so, so happy for them. So Nicole is now able to go back to work feeling confident that Isabel's getting the healthy sleep that she needs and that mom is also able to now get the healthy sleep that she needs with her going back to work. So they're doing awesome guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hi, it's Alana McGinn here. Thanks so much for watching Good Night Sleep TV. If you would like any more information on Good Night Sleep Site or how to work with a good night consultant, you can head over to goodnightsleepsite.com or follow us on social or subscribe to our YouTube channel on all the links below. Thanks so much, guys. I hope everybody has a good night.